How's the morning going so far? Great. You know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at CS for All is bringing voices to bear that come with a different perspective, that bring something you might not have heard or a piece to the conversation. And we're so excited to have this panel about accelerating local communities. A new program at CS for All this year is our local accelerator program, where we're bringing together teams from communities the formal education system, the informal education system, funders, teacher preparation programs, all in one place, focused intently on trying to advance CS education within that place. And so I'm so excited to welcome this panel, including Kate Maloney from the Infosys Foundation USA, who helped sponsor our uh, beautiful reception last night. Kate, welcome out. Chase Lockmiller from Crusoe Energy. Chase, come on up and Kalisha Davis from the Kapoor Center. So thank you guys for joining me. And rather than run through all your bios and everything, since we only have a short amount of time, I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourselves through a lightning round question. Um, and so what are you doing to change the game in computing? It might not be computing education, but what are, why are you here today talking about game changing with us? Kate? I'm first up. You are. Okay. Um, well, some of this, if you were at the opening reception, I, I did say, but I think it's true. Uh, we are going to where the kids are. So we are trying to be game changers by going to where kids are spending time outside of the traditional classroom in places where they can bring their whole selves, where they feel empowered and we can entice them or inspire them to do more with computer science. So that means, as an example, up in Hartford, I live in Connecticut, we brought a makerspace to a club that didn't have one. We hope that replicates across the country. We have Code with Classy STEM camps um, that we brought to our Raleigh office. And we have a new project that we did with Chibatronics and Opera on Tap. We're bringing opera to Title I schools and giving kids a chance to learn about the arts, but to layer in something cool, which is tech. And you saw it last night. We talked about the wearables you saw on stage. So we're looking to go to where they are to inspire them to feel that empowerment. Yeah, and that group STEM from Dance that opened us up this morning just showed the power of that when we, when we empower kids to really bring themselves to bear. Chase, what are you doing to change the game? Um, so I, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Crusoe Energy. Um, we are, our core mission is to align the future of computing with the future of the climate. We build large scale climate aligned computing infrastructure to tackle the world's most energy intensive computing problems, things like artificial intelligence, digital currencies, rendering scientific computing. Um, and in doing that, we've sort of built the cleanest cloud plat cloud computing platform in the world that can help innovators and, and uh, sci scientists and engineers um, unlock all of the human potential that's enabled by computing-led innovations without having to bear the environmental cost of that, which is uh, very critical at a moment when computing, uh, demand for computing is, is accelerating and with it, the power consumption of that is accelerating. Um, you know, it's forecast to be greater than 10% um, in the next decade. So um, it's a really, really important problem to solve and decarbonize so that we can all benefit and and uh, live prosperously from all of these amazing innovations that are taking place in the computing space. Additionally, I think we're going to talk about this in a second, but we uh, uh, sponsored the uh, Denver Accelerator. We're a Denver-based company, and we really wanted to bring CS education and make it available to uh, the Denver community, um, where we have you know our employees' children and and uh, uh, you know just the community we care about so much, and and really make an impact there. Yeah, and you changed the game for us a little bit because you made a piece of your donation in cryptocurrency. Exactly. So CS for All <laughs> accepted our first cryptocurrency donation thanks to your support and help setting us up with a system that let us do that. Kalisha, you're based in Detroit. How Absolutely. are you in the k Poor Center changing the game for CS education? So for those that are familiar with the k Poor Center, I think you all know that we're committed to change, changing the perception of computing and technology. And so we're asking a lot of the familiar questions as far as who has access, why, how, and where. Uh, but we're also thinking about sparking possibilities for people of all ages to be able to realize their full potential. So we need to be able to be rooted in the community, to have those conversations with, with all members, 
to ensure that computing and technology can be a real service to their needs and their interests. And I think that's where it begins. Yeah, and you're all up here, as Chase said, because you've helped contribute to the new accelerator partner. You've been uh, thought leaders for me, uh, helping me shape and curate the communities that we're participating in, bringing authentic voices to bear in those spaces. And for those of you in the audience who are interested in learning more about our accelerator, there'll actually be another breakout session later where you can hear from some of the actual practitioners on the ground that we're engaged with. So, Kalisha, I'm going to go to you first in a kind of a rewind. Um, you know, a big piece of the work that KPOR Center does elevates voices. You elevate the voices of students, making sure that student panels advise your programs, of parents, of communities. And I remember when we first connected, you were like, how do we make sure that this just isn't like a parachute program? That really is what is valued is what's happening in Detroit and what's happening for those communities. For all of us out here in the audience and out on the live stream, who, how do we make sure we get the right voices at the table when we're working in community? What does that mean when we're trying to build change for education and especially CS education in local spaces? So I returned home in 2015 to lead a multi-year effort to honor the rebellion of 1967, which was some really important work. And part of what I learned through the Detroit 67 project and work that I'm currently doing with CS Equity is that change in community moves at the speed of trust. So we have to make sure that we're connecting <clears throat> in ways that are meaningful to community members and that they ultimately are the ones that are leading those efforts, because that's how you make it sustainable. You need to ensure that they have the knowledge, the resources, and the information. So that's how I see myself as more of a conduit than anything else in the connector and to take every available tool that I have at my disposal to make sure that those voices are elevated in ways that matter. So it, it starts with having those conversations with educators in K-12 spaces, um, administrators, connecting with our friends in, in, higher, in, in higher learning and universities. And also we wanna make sure that students have the opportunity to lead and, and we're working on developing the, a, a student leadership team on a citywide level to help inform our efforts. But really it's ultimately just getting out of the way because a city like Detroit, there is already so much inherent knowledge, history and power that is there. So how do we ensure that we tap into the things that already exist and align our efforts with, with the good work that's already taking place? Yeah, that's amazing. And I think you know, as we all go to try and do culturally responsive uh, pedagogy, right? As we try and bring activities to the classroom that represent the whole self of students, we really also want to make sure that we pack, practice culturally responsive program implementation, right? Absolutely. Culturally responsive school leadership so that those communities on the ground get to drive their own future um, and that we're there to provide resources and support not to determine their path forward um, as a part of the work at CS for All. Yeah, I'm just thinking the the avoiding bringing in something that has worked in another community of such incredible cities in the accelerator program. I think it's why we are a supporter of it. Uh, but what's going to work in your Detroit context is going to be totally different than the chat we had about what's happening in Denver. Uh, our foundation's done some cool work in Duluth. We worked with the mayor of Duluth um, because we looked at the city and saw it was ranking quite low. I mean, Minnesota's at the bottom of the list and, and Duluth is quite challenged, but we said that's a ripe opportunity to support. So who are the people we need to bring to the table and then sort of get out of the way, be a catalyst and say we're here to support um, and then step step aside. But really think of all of those stakeholders who need to be there and then look at those those signals, those nuances, you used that word earlier to today, um, really being sensitive to what makes a community distinct and not losing that as we try to promote this bigger enchilada. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Kate, your work in maker spaces and out of school time programs, you know, we talk a lot and you can see in our exhibit hall, some of the great out of school time organizations like Girls Who Code, who bring resources and support to communities. But our kids, they don't, they don't learn in one room, right? And we can't get to equity if we're only saying, oh, there's the one room where they're going to learn computer science in that community and we're done, check, goodbye. 
right? Because our wealthy communities, our privileged communities, those kids have many rooms where they can learn computer science. So, you know, what does OST bring to the conversation when we engage those leaders and bring the libraries, the maker spaces, the boys and girls club like uh, Chase, you brought into Denver? How does that enrich the experience uh, of the community? Um, I'm dominating the mic, so I need to share the space. Um, I feel like we saw during COVID that inequality was even more pronounced when it came to what's what homes look like. So I think about a student, if they are fortunate, there's a computer science experience in their classroom during the day. But if not, we have to fill that gap with the place they go after school. Um, and hopefully there is a place for them to go because we know at home there may just be one device. There also may be a little bit of bias from the family vis-a-vis -vis what is tech and should my daughters be spending time on this? So I think those after-school spaces are safe and they're places that we can expose them to really cool things and um, bring more computer science to bear. Yeah. Chase? You, you brought the Boys and Girls Club to us in, with the Denver Accelerator. Um, and I think you, know, you hosted us for a dinner with lots of prominent leaders from the Denver community where not only Computer Science for All had a chance to talk about our mission, but we also brought up some educators from the Denver Public Schools, their career and technical education programs. Um, what, what do you think we learn when we bring together that community to talk to each other in a space as we bring initiatives forward? Well, I, I think that uh, one of the things that really attracted me to the CS for All education program was that community building aspect of it. I think that, you know, really is the crux of it. I think uh, when you look at, you know, I think everybody's like, oh yeah, we need more STEM education. We want that, you know, like let's, let's go get that. But how do you actually implement that? It, it really needs to come from the community um, and there really needs to be resources that, you know, people uh, can, can, can lean on in order to, uh, you know, execute that that mission. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was really, really wonderful to kind of bring together members of the Denver community. Um, I know I was so impressed kind of, you know, the first time meeting you when we were connected by uh, Evan Korth, uh, a mutual friend of ours that's a professor at NYU. And uh, just kind of seeing the community that you had built in the New York City public school system. And, um, you know, being a, a Denver-based company, I was really inspired by wanting to bring that same sense of computer science education community to Denver. Yeah. So I'm going to finish this off with one more lightning round question. Um, and, you know, we're here not only to celebrate the amazing work your communities are doing and each of you for the way that you've believed in CS for All and the power of the kids and educators and families and community members who are driving that work locally, uh, but also to help connect this larger community to shine a light in a way that can inspire others. We find so much inspiration through our commitments and the storytelling we do. So if each of you could give one piece of advice, you all bring a slightly different perspective to this. Uh, what piece of advice would you give to someone out here in the audience or on the live stream who's thinking about maybe they could do this in their own town. Maybe they could start to connect the players in a way to change the game for kids. Um, what would you tell them? And I'll start, Chase, with you. Sure. Um... I would tell them just to just to get started. I mean, you know, you you don't know the outsized impact that you can have on your local community, and 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 how important your input is to uh, changing the direction of the future of your local community. And things like computer science education are multipliers, right? They yeah. they multiply over the course of generations, and. Uh, can really transform people's lives. And, you know, as someone that employs a lot of people that um, are coming from these, you know, b backgrounds in computer science education, uh, you know, I, I can say that it's very hard to, to hire people with, with uh, technical skills. And, you know, the demand is, you know, essentially infinite because all of the future of innovation is being driven by uh, these computing-led innovations. And um, there's been sort of this divergence in the job market uh, between you know, the skills people are trained for and what the job market is demanding. And, you know, the, I think by, by investing uh, into our students and, and arming them with the right tools uh, to, to match what the job market's demanding, I think is, is really a way to, that you can really change people's lives and, and change uh, the direction of their life. Great. Kate? 
Um, I'm seeing my friend from the Accelerator cohort um, group, Max, from yesterday. We talked about, <laughs> Max had this tip, but listening, listening loudly, like really practicing that attention for the signals to what's culturally relevant. And then I thought once you pull who you think are the right stakeholders together, take a beat, pause, and just look again and go one step further. Perhaps there's someone who is left out of um, a meeting where you're going to plan a strategy or there's someone whose voice should be at the table. And once you then invite them, you have to find a way to then reflect back every one of those faces in the strategy that you develop. Yeah, Kalisha? So I totally agree with what you said, Kate. <clears throat> I think that before the work begins, you have to perform your due diligence and understand the history and story of that community. So who are the people that are often overlooked but have a great deal of knowledge and that a number of people look to for answers? Um, what kind of core values does that community have? How they're engaging um, bet relationships between adults and young people to be able to drive community change. So once you have that understanding, then you can begin to build relationships and trust and, and think together to develop a vision that can inform the community for, you know, for years to come. And so it begins there. And then you just, and then you take the time. It, it takes time to do this. It's not something that can happen quickly. You know, you may take months, you may take years, but ultimately, you know, what, what your end result is, is something that you could, it's, it's beyond anything that you can possibly imagine. And that's the whole goal is for it to be something that sustains beyond your involvement in it. Yeah, I have a post-it note taped to my monitor at home. Um, and Rashad Jones, who leads The Color of Change, said on a webinar in 2020, how do we translate extended presence to power? And so as we go out and operate in our communities, as we try and be inclusive about the voices that we bring in, we have to remember it's not only for their presence that we want them in the conversation, it's for their ideas, it's for their knowledge, it's to empower them. Um, and so I wanna first thank the panelists and everyone here for listening. Um, the Accelerator will have a breakout session later in the agenda but you each are really not only changing the game in your own space and industry, but through the work with CS for All, uh, helping us change the game in communities for kids. So thank you so much. Great.